Hi, this is Steve Black, and I want to welcome you to this month's webinar based on our ebook, The Guide to Marketing Your Business with Facebook Ads. We're super excited about today's webinar, and I think you get a ton of great ideas. If you're one of our members, you should have the handout to follow along. Uh, when we look at Facebook, from a marketer's perspective, your goal is to go ahead and get into your prospects' news feeds. Those can be people that you might be selling to in the future, people that are part of your sphere, and also stay top of mind with your past customers. People spend an average of 58 minutes a day on social media. The majority of it is spent on Facebook, especially in the demographics that a lot of us serve in the business world uh, when we're recording this uh, webinar. <clears throat> and there's only four ways to get into people's news feeds. You know, if you're friends with them on Facebook, which is how most people go, you know, there's about a 7% success ratio. If uh, maybe you run a group and they're a part of it, they might have opt in or opt out to see what you're posting, so you really don't have that much control of getting into their news feed. Uh, if you like, have them like your business page, uh, even if you get a thousand likes, you know, you're going to get maybe 10 to 50 people organically seeing it. And uh, with the new changes in the algorithm that Mark Zuckerberg announced, uh, it sent the, sh the stock down because he said, hey, we're going to go ahead and promote the Facebook in users experience we're gonna make it so less business stuff gets into their newsfeed organically so that number continues to drop some people are even saying that it's you know the business page apocalypse or uh, Facebook zero uh, I don't think it's that severe but you have to definitely have some strategies to reach the people that like your page likes do become important as I'll talk about in boosting posts and some other things but your most reliable way is to, sh because time is money, is to shortcut all the hacks and just advertise or promote your post. Uh, this is very cost effective. It's super targeted, as we'll talk about. And you could scale it up real quick. You know, if you were to have an event on Thursday, you know, you could go to Facebook on Tuesday morning and run 36 hours of ads, or you could run, you know, three hours of ads the day before the event and really pick up some traction. So uh, th these are really the four ways to get into people's news feeds, and we're going to focus on the last one, which is how to advertise and promote your post. Let me just start by explaining how Facebook advertising works. You know, when people log on to Facebook and view their news feeds, uh, they see various things, you know, pic uh, pictures and, and, and posts from family members, from friends, from pages they've liked. And also they see sponsored posts. And, you know, these ads uh, blend in really well. The only real difference is that little word sponsored uh, when, when we see it in our, our Facebook feed. So while it might be too obtrusive to go ahead and email somebody or call them or text them, uh, if, if you uh, have them in your uh, targeted list, either by creating a custom audience or by uh, somehow finding them in the demographics and get into their news feed, uh, you can get your message in front of the right person at the right time. And Facebook advertising is a lot different than other types of online advertising and, you know, traditional advertising because you can hyper-target the audience that sees your ad. I mean, if you only want to market to people that live in a certain zip code, that are college educated and are likely to move, you know, they have those options available. If you only want to target, if you had a restaurant and or a wine shop and you only wanted to target people in a zip code that had a net worth of over a hundred thousand dollars or over a million dollars that liked wine you could do that so when set up correctly you're able to show your ads only to the people who closely match your ideal customer that avatar and that means you don't waste money showing ads to people that you don't already know that you know uh, don't already know that have an interest in your business 
So I want to give you a couple of examples before we get into the nitty gritty because, you know, they say pictures are worth a thousand words. So in our opinion, you know, Facebook ads at this time of this recording, you know, are dirt cheap. It costs uh, about $10 to reach 700 targeted people. If you were to compare that, let's say, to mailing postcards, you'd be looking at about $350 to $400 to reach 700 targeted people. And I can make a strong case that more people are going to see it on Facebook than in their mailbox because consumer behavior has changed so much in the last few years. I mean, you take a 50-year-old guy and, you know, 15 years ago, he got most of his news uh, you know, from his big screen TV on his couch while he was op taking a half hour to open his mail. Now he gets his news via his smartphone and he probably goes straight from the mailbox to the trash can with uh, the stuff that's arrived today or this week. So I can make not only a strong case that it's it's more co more cost effective, but it's actually more effective. But you'll see here a post that we put on my business page. Uh, we were having an event a couple days later and attendance is low. So rather than go out there and say, come to our event, we went out there with a video with a cool backdrop, the ocean and, and uh, you know, uh, something that was value oriented, you know, a few tips on how to make positive change. Um, you know, you know, gave you know, call to action. And then we uh, boosted this post. We paid a total, I think, of $38 to reach, uh, actually, I think it was about $30 to reach about 6,495 people. And almost 4,000 of uh, those were organic, as you can see by the dark orange compared to the light orange. Um, so we reached that many people, 3,900 people took the time to watch the video for at least three seconds. Then we retargeted, which is what we'll talk to you about later, a second ad that said, hey, we have a live session coming up in three days. And we had like 160 people show up for that. So that's that one-two punch. Give them something of value, then follow it up with something that uh, maybe is an offer. All right, so here's another one um, that we did. This is Memorial Day. And uh, this was the $38 post, and it's, uh, you know, uh, a picture of a soldier out there at, at a graveyard. Uh, it was really kind of irking my, myself and my staff that no, no millennials that we talked to, no high school kids uh, that, uh, that we talked to, uh, knew what Memorial Day was. You know, they said it's the day that, you know, school gets out, the day we go to the beach with our families. One kid told us it was, you know, the day that you know, for people served in the military. And I, we just felt a need to go out there and educate people that, hey, now this is the day that, you know, Americans gave the ultimate sacrifice their life for our freedom. So we went out there um, with sort of a community service message. Uh, we got a great picture. Uh, we we uh, went ahead and branded it with um, our, our information, we used an app called uh, Word Swag to put the Memorial Day 2017 over it. And then uh, we posted it to our business page. And uh, then we advertised it for $38 to reach 7,800 people. And about 4,300 of them were organic. So if you look over on the right, you could see how many people were reached by the post. You could see it was super effective. It got 333 reactions. 91 people chose to share it. And that's why it's really important when you put stuff out there to brand it. Also, make sure they're royalty-free images so that you don't get any lawsuits against you. You can use a site called Shutterstock or Unsplash. And, and if you like these specifics that I'm talking about, you know, um, we have the Success Summit Seminar. You can learn more about that at businesssuccesstraining.com. Uh, or, or we have our monthly members area where we go ahead and put together these great classes. So if you happen to be a visitor, uh, that would be how you can get more of this great content. But back to the training, and, and you'll see here we had we put this post up. I'm going to pull pull the curtain aside and just show you what I mean by the numbers. So we paid to advertise it to a targeted group of people, people that liked our page and their friends that were age 18 to 65 who lived in 13 different locations. So basically, let's say we had like 2,000 people in these 13 uh, locations that have liked our page. And let's say each of them have 200 friends on Facebook that also lived in those locations. 
now we're going to be. Re- I have a potential audience of about forty thousand people, and we and we and we spent uh, thirty eight dollars of our budget to reach that many folks. But again, it was seen by almost seven thousand people or seventy eight hundred people. So the rest of that was organic. Uh, maybe about forty, actually about forty eight hundred. So. That brings us to how do you do this whole process? And you know, you've got two choices with your posts, and one is the Facebook ad manager, and the other is boosted post. So here's how it worked, you know, eight, ten years ago on Facebook. You set up a business page, you got a thousand people to like your page, and then once you posted stuff, it got into those people's news feeds. I mean, at a really high rate, like 80 or 90 percent. So if you had a thousand likes. Uh, you had to have 800 or 900 people potentially seeing your post. That's awesome for marketers because it was free. Well, with all the competition that's evolved over time, Facebook going public, uh, the new algorithm changes, organic reach is down to like one to, I'd really say one to two percent, though I've been generous here by saying five percent. Uh, the number of people that like your page are going to see your post. So that's like 10 to 50 people in that thousand like example. So the game isn't as much to get likes now as it is to go ahead and know how to get into people's news feeds with uh, organic strategies that still work like Facebook Live or to go with uh, the most uh, you know uh, trustworthy one which is just to pay to be in their feed. So Depending on what kind of uh, engage, uh, a post or engagement uh, you have is going to determine uh, how many people's news feeds you get in. I mentioned Facebook Live is a really good choice for that. Um, if you're going to boost a post you know, and you've got a lot of likes, like we have a realtor client that has 4,500 likes. I have another one that has 5,200 likes. You know, they could just press the boost post button if it's not a uh, sales oriented or a lead generation. Maybe it's just an article or just listing announcement. Um, they could press that button and it'll get out to the people that know them, like them and trust them. Uh, the other thing you could do with boost is you can, you know, choose to market to certain groups of people, whether it's by zip code or by age or by other demographics, but it's kind of limited compared to what you could do with the ad creator tool. So if you are going to boost your post, you know, um, you're going to go ahead and put up your post, usually it's a great picture, you know, some great text or, or comments. We'll talk about that later. You'll look for the little blue button and then you'll press it. Uh, next, it'll give you uh, various uh, choices like objective. Do you want to go ahead and get engagement or would you like to go ahead and uh, you know, get more page likes. Usually we'll choose like engagement. Uh, one great thing though about boosting, uh, you know, and you're doing this usually from your mobile phone, you can add a button to the post and the button's going to be, uh, you know, any one of six or seven things like shop now, book now, learn more, sign up, send message. Um, the, the two best ones are either send message or learn more because, you know, they aren't as committal as something like sign up or book now. So just keep that in mind. But that button is a very powerful feature. And now the minimum that you can boost a post for is a dollar for one dollar for one day. But that that little button stays there even after the boost is over. So that's kind of an interesting tidbit on that. But um if you've already done some of the other things that we're going to talk about, like setting up these custom audiences, uh, Boost Post can work uh, pretty well for you. Uh, if you don't have any real objective of selling things, maybe you're just trying to get the wheels going, you know, get, take that post from being seen by six people to being seen by 160 people for a dollar. Um, it's a good way to go. Or, or if you're in a hurry, I mean, you know, we, we boost a lot of posts, you know, that, you know, we just want to get the wheels moving on. And uh, because, again, we've set up custom audiences, it's, it's pretty effective the way we do it. And it can be for you as well. But the reality is the boost post button is like the... Uh, that easy button, I think it's for Office Depot or Staples, you know, it's just the easy button. Uh, I compare it to going down, getting a Southwest salad at the store. It's pre-made, you know, it's got corn, it's got the cheese, it's got those little nasty red onions. You hate onions, but you grab the salad anyways because it's quick, it's fast, it's easy. You're going to probably pay a little bit more than you should. You're not going to get exactly what you want. If you want to get exactly what you wanted, 
what would you do? You would go ahead and you know buy yourself the lettuce, get yourself corn, get yourself cheese. You'd probably be able to make five of these for the price of one, and you wouldn't have to mess with picking out the onions. That's the strategy we're going to teach you. Uh, but like I said, it has its place. And um, you know, when you boost a post, you know you have three objectives that you can choose from. Whereas you know, like I said, you know, being able to go ahead and customize, you have eleven objectives with the ad manager. You know, ranging from engagement or event promotion to reach or conversion. Uh, in terms of budgeting, you have a lot more options um, with the way we're going to teach you with the Facebook ad creator than with um, the boost post. Boost post, you just do a uh, a lifetime budget, whereas with the uh, Facebook ad creator, you can do a daily budget. And um, the other thing, for those of you that are bilingual or looking to market in another language, uh, Boost Post is not going to be your option of choice. Let's say you're going to do a, a video in Portuguese or you're going to do one in Spanish. Uh, you want to reach people that speak Portuguese or speak, speak Spanish. And the only way you could do that is by using the ad creator, not using Boost Post. And... Um, the other thing, you know, that's that, that's really a, the, your, your one of your best strategies is retargeting, and you can't really implement that with the boost post option. So, just understand basically, boost post is for beginners. Uh, it has its place. Uh, if you do get a lot of likes and you set up your list, usually, you know, through the ad manager, which I'm going to show you, now you can come back and use this on occasion. So, let's talk a little bit about the ad manager. And there's really two places you're going to be able to access it. The two places you live on your mobile device, whether that's a phone or an iPad or a tablet, and then your desktop or your laptop. So there's an app you can download called Facebook Ads Manager. And I recommend you do that. Even though it got rated at like two and a half stars in this picture, uh, it's really pretty effective. I think people are just, you know, screaming and complaining about Facebook. But uh, if you're going to run ads, you're going to want to have this on your phone. So it's a Facebook ad manager. Make a note to download that. Uh, from the desktop or laptop, you find it in the upper right-hand corner. There's going to be a little drop-down arrow. Then you're going to go down to where it says Create Ads. You're going to left-click on that. And then Facebook is going to set up your ad manager. And then you'll see it um, on your screen while you wait. It's a little, um, you know, timer thing that goes by pretty quick. Now, if you've never used it, they're going to ask you to link a credit card to your account. And there's usually a threshold. Like our threshold is like $750. So we can run $750 in ads and then they'll charge us all at once. Or we could choose to lower that threshold and, you know, get charged every, you know, $50 or $100. But you're going to have a credit card linked to your account. And then um, from, then from that point on, what happens is you, you, you jump right into this screen. And, and this screen is where those 11 options uh, happen. Now, they're always changing this. So by the time you watch it, it might have 12 or 13. But right now, we got 11 on the screen. And this is where the guessing starts. You know, everybody I talk to, I'm like, if you run Facebook ads, well, what do, you, what, do you, what do you use when you get here? And then people meekly, you know, guess at what they should be using. And sometimes they guess right. Like let's say you were doing an event like for your BNI or your opportunity meeting or your, your open house. Uh, you know, there's one here that's better than all the rest and that would be engagement because then a little sub menu opens up that says uh, promote your event. Of course, you would have had to have started by putting your event on your business page. And that's another thing to mention, um, whether you're boosting posts or using the ad create tool, that you can only boost stuff off of your business page. So if you're the person that's been posting everything to their personal profile, you, you're sharing it with people you know, but how are you going to reach people you don't know? The only way is to go ahead and post to your business page, maybe share it to your personal profile so you still get those vanity statistics, you know, your brothers and sisters and moms and friends liking your stuff. But now you're able to reach the people that you really want to reach to either come into your store or set an appointment with you or find out what their house is worth, etc. So um, good ones to use on the left side, you'll see it says awareness, it says consideration in the middle, and then it sees, says conversion. So when you're just trying to create awareness, um, like I was with that video over the ocean, 
Uh, that would be a good place to use, let's say, the reach, where I would just try to reach as many people and create awareness about, you know, uh, the, the, my one minute uh, on goal tips for 2000 uh, for the year. Uh, once people clicked on that, now I can run a second ad either based on consideration or on conversion. And uh, if you don't know which to use, don't get overwhelmed by this. Just go with uh, engagement because that will force people in most scenarios to either like your post or to comment on it. And once that happens, you can have conversations. Uh, if you're ever looking to, for them to fill out a lead form, you're going to go with conversions. But this is a good go-to. If you don't know which one to use, just go with that one. All right. So... Um, we call this the in the book, uh, the level one, what campaign level are you going to choose? And as I said, your go-to is engagement. Um, when you're first trying to create awareness, reach is a good way. And then if you're really, a, you know, they've already watched a video, they, they've engaged with the post. Now it's time to start hitting them with maybe a what's your home worth lead form or book an appointment lead form based on conversion. All right, so now that you've defined your goals, now we have to say, okay, moving to level two, you know, what, who are you hoping to target with your Facebook ads? And I'm going to go ahead and fix the spelling on that. Uh, but do you want to target women or men or both? You know, is your product or service going to be a fit for single and married people? You know, is it tw are 20 and 30 year old for, uh, sports fans going to be your target? You know, do, do you want to get the attention of people who like to go like classical music in your city? I mean, who, who are we trying to reach? Who is going to be your prospective uh, customer? Maybe there's four or five of them, and that's when we run different audiences and we split test against those ads. Now, even if you only had a dollar, a couple, or two dollars to spend on ads each day, you can still get your ads in front of a lot of people. Uh, our rule, write this down, is to always boost the post, always promote the post. And I use boost interchangeably with promote, but... Um, why go ahead and take the time to post something, only have it go out to, you know, six to 20 people when for a dollar you can get it out to a couple hundred people, get the wheels going, especially if it's one of those posts that gets liked, commented or shared. It's going to go into Facebook's algorithm and all of a sudden you're going to have something that for very little money is going to get in front of a lot of people. The minimum uh, promotion is a dollar for a day. But what we, we recommend is $2 for two days minimum, okay? And our, our psychology, our thinking on that is that, you know, somebody might not be on Facebook today, but they'll definitely be on it by tomorrow uh, in most situations. Um, you know, little $5 tests here and there, split testing can help you find a winner. You know, trial and error is kind of the name of the game. But the best way to learn the Facebook ads interface, like anything on Facebook, is just to do it. And while you might not see a high rate of return on your first few ads, uh, the minute you get that ad rolling and you're getting all those likes and those comments and those shares, like the two ones I showed you, the video and the Memorial Day, now you got a formula for success. And we could duplicate that with Valentine's Day. We could duplicate it with Easter. We could du duplicate it with Passover. We could du duplicate it with uh, Christmas, Hanukkah, Thanksgiving. So I think you'll... Uh, uh, understand it's valuable to learn how to fish versus just having somebody fish for you. So when we get into targeting, there are th literally thousands of ways that you can target on Facebook. But, you know, a few bro the broader categories are, you know, person's age or gender or location. Um, you could target pages that the person already likes on Facebook. Like, you know, I'm in the personal development business. So a lot of times... If I don't have the money or budget to go ahead and market to, let's say, 10,000 people that are in this geographic area, I'll target other people who like Tony Robbins or like Zig Ziglar or like uh, Grant Cardone. And so literally I can uh, tap into their fan base uh, by targeting those. <clears throat> if you're a realtor and you, let's say you were documenting the process of flipping a house, doing a Facebook Live like one of my clients did in Winter Park. You know, she did four or five episodes. And then we started promoting it not only to people in that geographic area that were likely to move and the people that were 
uh, you know, in her sphere, but also to people that like the television shows called Flippers and, you know, Property Brothers. That's an example of targeting other pe pages that the person already likes. Um, by using the retargeting, the Facebook pixel, you know, you could, you know, get your ads in front of people that have been on your website. And uh, women always understand retargeting, like ladies uh, that are on the call. If you've ever looked at a pair of red shoes uh, on the Internet or looked at a and b to rent, and then all of a sudden that thing starts stalking you everywhere you go on the Internet, you, 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 you've had retargeting done to you. And they put a pixel on your computer by you going to that web page. And now everywhere you go, you're going to start to see ads of either that, those shoes, that, that cabin, or, or, that, or that purse that you were looking at. And we could also target people based on their interest, you know. Um, do, they, do they like wine? Do they like uh, real estate investing? Do they like uh, entrepreneurship? So, uh, do they like... Uh, Cosmetics. So, like, if you're a Mary Kay rep, maybe you're going to target people that like Cosmopolitan magazine. So, just really, really hyper targeted things that weren't available to us ten years ago. And this is why Facebook's worth over four hundred um, billion dollars. Is it million or billion? Four hundred million, right? Probably, probably more, I don't know. <laughs> They're worth a lot of money. Anyways, uh, let's keep this rolling. Uh, getting to know the Facebook ad manager, all right? So uh, I'm going to show you some specific examples. But let's say you're a realtor and i got all sorts of people on this call. You know, you could target your Facebook ads to show only to people that live within a certain radius, whether that's zip code or defined by, you know, five or ten miles of your town that Facebook knows from their activity that have an interest in real estate investing. Um, let's say that you own a clothing store. I know I've got a lady on the call that has a vintage clothing store in, in I think it's Lakeland. So, you, you know, sh sh she could target her Facebook ads only to show to, you know, college educated women between the ages of 40 and 50 that live within 10 miles of her store. Or if you're a men's clothier or uh, you could do the same thing uh, to, the, to men that lived in, within that area that were college educated. If you have a Pilates studio or in the fitness business, you know, you could target your ads to show only to females that attend the university near your studio and uh, that have an interest in Pilates. You know, maybe with that, you know, special that you're, you're rolling out where you can take five classes for $29 or something, college, uh, it must show your college ID, but you're only showing it to the college students that like Pilates. So I hope your wheels are spinning and you're going from, you know, wow, why should I be doing this or taking the time to learn it to, wow, I could really uh, change my whole business as a result of this. I know it's changed our business. I used to, have to do a lot more traveling and I've been able to go really deep into the markets that I'm, I'm in, not have to travel as much and, you know, still maintain my profitability. Um, let's do a specific one here. Okay, so... I know I got a lot of realtors on the call, so I, I'm going to use a real estate example. Let's say that you had a, a, a luxury house, you know, maybe a $1.8 million listing. Uh, Winter Park is one of the top three or four suburbs in, in, in central Florida. Uh, you, could, you could set up, a, you know, an open house example on the left. You could set out, up a uh, just listed uh, post on the right. Again, you're doing both of these on your business page. Uh, if you'll notice the one on the right, it has four pictures, and that's really the ideal number. That first picture that you put up is always going to be the biggest. Then you have the three others. If you were to add a fifth picture, you'd get a little plus sign in the lower right-hand corner, and I think it would take away from the visual. But whether it's one picture, it's, it's, it's four pictures, uh, now it's on your business page, but you'll see six people reached. That's pretty much what's going to happen if you don't promote the post, okay? So now you're taking the time to, to put this great text up here, you know, link them to the custom website, you know, put in a hyperlink or a, a um, hashtag. You, you know, you've superimposed images on, on your pictures. You've done all the right things, but you didn't put postage on the envelope, so only six people are going to see it. And then you're going to, you know, wonder why it's not working for you. So we're going to show you how to get results got a $1.8 million listing, uh, just came on the market. You're going to promote an open house by setting up an event on your business page. You're going to go ahead and uh, set it up as, uh, which is going to get you the, all this. 
You're going to set up uh, another post with uh, three, uh, three or uh, four pictures. Now you're going to go ahead and you're going to go uh, want to go ahead and um, advertise it. We're using the ad manager. So you went through the, the first 11 choices. Um, you're probably going to choose uh, a reach or engagement. Definitely engagement for that open house because that's going to open up another menu that's going to say event responses. And it's going to say like, you know, 200 million people are here in this audience. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to drop the city. So you can put the city here or you can put a zip code. The zip code would be limited to just the, the, those in that zip code. All right. The next thing that you're going to do is you would scroll down the page is, is, is you might go ahead and you might put in, um, you know, the income. You know, who's going to buy this property? They probably have to have an income of at least two hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollars or more. So a high end attorney, high end financial advisor, entrepreneur, business owner. Um, maybe they're a homeowner, right? Already. So we're going to target people that have high income or that are homeowners. And then we're going to narrow the audience. There would be a button here that says narrow the audience. Then we're going to put in people that are likely to move. So this is all summarized on the right side here. But what we're going after are people in Winter Park within a 25 mile radius. So that would capture some of the other uh, high end subdivisions that are likely to move, that make a lot of money, that are homeowners. And we could even exclude people that are already signed up for the open house if we wanted. This knocks it down to an audience of 2,300 people. And at this point, you know, you've got a choice. Do you want to further narrow the audience? Or are you going to go ahead and break out a whopping 32 dollars to get in front of approximately 2,300 people? And you know, if you could, you know, have, you know, let's say 15 or 30, 20 people come by your open house. That, and, and they walk in and they say, yeah, I saw it on Facebook. We, we're thinking of moving. All of a sudden, you're going to pay for this ad many, many, many times over. So I hope that um, gives you a little clarity. You know, some other demographic choices that we can choose. If we want to target renters that make a lot of money, we could. Or if we want to go after people that are first-time home buyers, we could do that. Or people that are homeowners. Um, I mentioned income. It doesn't always have to be rich people. It could be, you know, people in the, you know, bracket between 50 and 75,000 and 75 to 100. Maybe that's a 199 condo or maybe that's a um, offer to come in and, you know, get their taxes done for a nominal amount or have a consultation. So who are you trying to reach? Facebook makes it really easy. Um, what's their behavior, you know, or have they lived in their house a long time? Are they new? Are they recent home buyer? If I was selling furniture or cars, maybe I'm going to go target people that are recent home buyers. I think I saw a stat like 42% of people that buy a home, buy a car within six months. You know, they've had to keep their credit clean and they need a new car for the, uh, the driveway. Um, so super, super important. That's how we, uh, use the Facebook ad targeting. Uh, in your members area, uh, under the Facebook ads, there's a detailed uh, video that kind of goes through this. It's about 18 minutes. as has a 34-point checklist attached with it. And it would kind of take you through exactly how to go ahead and run a, a high-end ad like this. And whether you're in real estate or in a different business, I recommend that you watch it. It happens to be a real estate example, but... Uh, it'll give you some enlightenment of, of exactly how to do this. And the great thing about that, you can stop it, you can watch it, you can move to the next step and um, get this down on your own. All right, so that was an example of using their various demographics and targeting. Now, the next example I'm going to show you is how you create a custom targeted audience. And this is one of the most important things that you can do, uh, especially to stay top of mind with your sphere. So instead of coming in and putting in, you know, the zip code and homeowners and income, we're starting with an audience of 200 million people. What we're going to do is we're going to go over here to where it says create new. We're going to left click on that and we're going to see a drop down come down that says, what do you want to create? And you have five different options here. We put in red the three that really are going to come into play for most of you. 
The customer file option, that's where you're going to be able to take a spreadsheet of anywhere from, let's say, one, <laughs> I think it's the smallest, you know, to, to I uploaded one with 250,000. And you're going to be able to upload that into Facebook and then create a custom audience. And if they're all over the country, then, um, you know, you, you're going to still be able to take that audience and then, you know, just target the people in your town if, if you want. But um, you could upload your customer file. And that could be your prospects, your past customers, your referral partners. I want to show you how easy it is to set up a uh, custom audience where you're able to basically put your uh, marketing into your sphere on autopilot. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, from my personal profile. I go to this upper right hand corner and I'm going to go over here to create ad. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to be uh, faced with a menu with 11 different selections. The meat of this lesson is how to go ahead and set up that custom audience. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just use an engagement ad. I'll name it as test engagement. I'll press continue. Now here's the meat of the lesson. So I'm going to go right here and where it says uh, instead of choosing by zip code and homeowners or income, I'm going to go up here where it says create new. I'm going to use this drop down, left click on that. Up's going to open up custom audience. I'm going to left click on that. I then have five choices. I want to upload a file. So I'm going to go ahead, left click on uh, create a customer file. That uh, it says add customers from your own file or import from Mailchimp. I'm gonna I have a CSV saved on my computer, so I'm gonna left click right there. I'm gonna left click here on upload file. I'm gonna find the CSV file. Let, let's assume that that's uh, my database right here. I'll go ahead and I'll grab that. I'll then go ahead and uh, press next. Now, where did that data come from? Well, let, let's assume that this is my uh, salesforce.com or it's my top producer. I've downloaded a CSV with, let's say, a thousand names in it. Now, I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to map those names. I'm going to go first name. I'm going to go last name. I'm going to go company. And let's say there's a thousand lines in here. Company is not going to be mapped. Phone number, that will be mapped. I'm going to go email. Now, that it's not taking those phone numbers because they're not configured properly. They shouldn't have had that work uh, field in them. So I'm going to do this based on three fields, first name, last name, and email. Ideally, it would have five fields. It would also have the cell number, and it would also have the um, zip code. But I'll go ahead and upload and create it. It'll go ahead and say, hey, we're uploading your all your rows. I guess there were 178 rows in that file. And now it's going to go out there and it's going to create an audience of uh, maybe 172 people. Uh, eventually, after it takes a few minutes to match up, it'll say you have a custom audience created with 172 people in it. So of the 178, it will have found 172. Now, here's the powerful thing. If I wanted then to go ahead and create a lookalike audience, now Facebook would go out there based on the demographics of these 178 people, create me a create a new audience for me of a few thousand people that also match that up. That is uh, very powerful. Let's say that the average person in this database of 178 people uh, made 125,000, had 2.2 kids, was 42 years old. It would then go out and college educated. It would then go out there and say, "Hey, we found another 2,000 people that match." that criteria and that's one way you can go ahead and stay in touch with your database and then go ahead and find other people that are like those people. I hope that impresses you and I hope that you see how easy it is to do. All right. Another uh, use of creating this custom audience is, is, is to create a custom audience based on people who have visited your website. So <clears throat> when we talk about the Facebook pixel, we talk about retargeting, you know, red shoes following you all around the Internet. What you do is, is you come over here and you then choose website traffic. It'll go ahead and um, only market it to people who 
where that pixel is fired on their computer. And I know it sounds like a high tech thing. It's really easy to do. Um, if you ever promote events like an Eventbrite, you put the pixel over there on their on their uh, ticket order form, and then you could see who has come and left without registering or people that have interacted. And and this is one of the new things, and this is why even though I've done Facebook uh, ad webinars, several of them in the past, and they're in your members area, I wanted to really uh, make sure you're new uh, new of this these two. Uh, these two right here the offline activity now that's going to be applicable if you were running a retail store you're in the heating and air business you're running ads you take your um, your software like salesforce.com and you link it up to Facebook and then they're going to be able to track based on people that walked into your store or called your telephone uh, you know if they had interacted with an ad you don't really need to be concerned with this most of you um, unless you have an app, uh, if you had an app, it could be linked over and then you could, you know, remarket to people who've downloaded your app. That's why people create these apps when they get downloaded at the Play Store, you know, the Pixel fire, fire, fires and then they can <clears throat> market it to people that have that app in their possession. But this engagement one is the one I'm most excited about because we used to have to, to be able to retarget people with the red shoes that I talked about following you around the internet. We had to have a pixel on the computer. We had to write a blog post over there. It was time consuming. It was, you know, a little bit techy. If you just want to go ahead and, and run a second series of ads to people who have been on your, engaged with your business page, you can do that. You want to only engage with people who have commented on posts or reacted to posts, you could do that. You want to only uh, retarget people who have engaged with the videos that you put up or your Facebook lives or the events, you can do that. So this is the one that's really, really awesome and it doesn't take any tech skills. Just post what you want to post like a Facebook live on, on Facebook. If you're like me in that, in that video over the ocean, you know, you have 7,000 people that it got out to. You got 3,900 people that watched it for at least three seconds, run a second lit ad based on engagement to people, the 3,900 people that watch the video with some kind of an offer like coming to a free lunch and have 150 people show up. So these are the audiences that we can create. Um, right now we're going to focus on creating a customer file. Those of you that believe in top of mind marketing to your database, if you work at a company like Keller Williams where they tell you to touch your sphere 33 times a year, take your database, your spreadsheet out of whatever CRM you use, download it, have a thousand names uploaded, it'll go out to Facebook. Facebook will say we found 870 of these people on Facebook. You save that audience and now just with that boost post button or through the create ad editor, you just choose that audience and your posts will go out to people that know you like you and trust you. And that's how, let's say you're in the kind of business like real estate where people judge you by your success and you know, you've only sold four houses, but because you're remarketing it to people that know you like you and trust you, it looks like you sold 40 houses. They're always seeing you on Facebook. All right. So now we're going to talk about, you know, setting up a pixel. So if you're going to you, you do the option where you're going ahead and um, we, we'll talk about this and we'll talk about how to create that custom audience. First thing is uh, when you go into that drop down arrow over here on the right, you would get to a menu and it would say ad manager. You'll get to this. It's also indicated in the book. You'll drop down to this red, red uh, arrow here because this is all hidden. It's kind of tricky. Go right here. It'll say all tools. This will open up as a menu. Then you can either click right here where it says pixels or you can click right here. It doesn't matter. You're going to end up at the same page. The page is going to look something like this if you've never created a pixel. If you already have a pixel created, it's going to look like something else. To create the pixel, you just left click right here. Then you come over here and it says make your pixel. Um, it's because I have a business account, I can create 10 pixels. You only really need one pixel, okay? I'll go ahead and I'll create it. And then I'll say, great, I've created my pixel. And then it says, how do you want to install it? Do you want to email the instructions over to my website guy? Do I want to install the code myself by copying and pasting and going into WordPress or my website's header? Or do I want to use some kind of integration manager like... Um, 
Um, one of like sh if you have a store, a Wix website, WooCommerce again, that's a WordPress thing. And you would just press the appropriate button, and then all of a sudden you'd have this like I think ten or twelve digit number that would be your pixel. So um, if you have more questions on that, you just go back into your uh, uh, face ad manager and you just type in pixels and it'll give you some Facebook help articles on that okay now once that is installed on your Eventbrite your website your blog whatever how do you go ahead and create the custom audience so that's installed it's been up for a month you know you've had 200 visitors to your website so now you want to run an ad to marketing to the people, the 200 buyers, let's say, that were in, went to the page on your website about, um, you know, do a free home search. So you come over here, you go create new, drop down menu comes down, you go to custom audience. We get back to that menu here. We go to website traffic. Then we go ahead and we tar uh, this pops up and we say, okay, we want to go to all of our website visitors in the last 30 days. We name it as our website dash 30 days. And then when somebody gets outside of 30 days, they get kicked out of this audience. And then they also go ahead and populate it with new people that have been there. This is an automated process. Isn't this awesome? You only have to do this once. So if you're not tech oriented, show this uh, webinar to your web designer and have him do it or her do it. They'll know what to do. But now you're going to go ahead and be able to run ads to people that have been on your website. Let's say that they went and uh, read your article on five things to do to get your house ready for sale. They ca you came over here and you called it website seller article dash 180 days. That's the maximum. So anybody that's been there for the last six months, you just keep showing them ads like how much the home prices are at an all-time high. Want to find out what your house is worth? I have information more accurate than Truly and Zillow. Message us for a free, no obligation estimate of value on your property. Boom. Okay. So now it's been created. And... Um, when I want to go ahead and run my ad, I go over here, I just type in a few letters from the, the name, I go ahead and I select it, I, uh, I, I, and then I'm running my ad to people that have um, visited the website. That's, that's an example I just gave you. Uh, I know it's, I may have lost some of you, but that's an example of how to use the retargeting pixel to track people that have been at your website. So here's another kind of retargeting, the one that I'm so excited about. How do you retarget people that have interacted with your posts, that have watched your videos, that have said, I'm interested in my, the, your event, whether it's an open house or it's an opportunity meeting. You come over here to engagement when you create your new audience. You then go to that, let's say it's the video. You then go ahead and choose the video like I did here. I mean, look at the views that we get on these videos, 3,900, 3,600, 3,600, 1,430. And that's because we target people that have engaged with other content. And then they're already like, okay, we're kind of fans of what he has to say. Let me watch this video. Anyways, then you press it. I say, I don't want to watch people that just watched it and left. I'm going to watch uh, target people, create a custom audience for people in the last 30 days who watched at least 10 seconds of the video. I know they're real interested. So I'm going to really get in front of the right people. And boom, now I've saved that audience. And whether I use my thumb on my mobile device or I'm on the Facebook ad editor, I can go ahead and remarket to that audience. So I hope you're as excited as I am. If you have any questions, enter them in the chat box, and I'll try to get to them um, by the end of the webinar. If I don't get to them today, I'll, I'll come back at a, a later date and you know put together a video or answer your questions. But um, we've talked about your goals, you know, with those eleven choices. We've talked about 
a few different strategies to use retargeting, one of which is to retarget people that have been on your website to people that have uh, you've uploaded a uh, database. And, and number three, uh, people that have just interacted with your stuff. And then you got to ask yourself, what are these ads going to look like? Well, you know, they, it's all about the images. And I just had a, a student, not, not, not from the coaching group, but that had registered for the seminar, and it was all gung-ho about running ads. And then he messages me, and he says, my ads keep getting disapproved. Well, what he was doing, rather than putting up pictures, he was putting up these spreadsheets of, like, everything that's happened in the area, you know, numbers and, you know, must have had, you know, a hundred fields there. It was all text. I said, you will never get that approved because you can't have more than 20% text in your images. So if you're that logical, you know, analytical person that likes to include all the data up front, you know, I am that person as well. Uh, it doesn't work. What you need to do is you need to have a good, clean image high res, upload it, a little bit of text, get people to link over, and then maybe use retargeting. But anyways, you can use, uh, don't don't just go out to Google and download stuff. I give you a couple websites you can use, Shutterstock. Uh, you could buy royalty-free images for like a dollar to ten dollars. Unsplash. Um, Facebook's ad editor links in with Shutterstock, and you actually get some of those images for free. Uh, if you're going to you know, use a, a picture of, of somebody, use a close-up of their face. It's a lot. And, and, and if you're doing events, faces of local people, people that they know, you know, that they've said, OK, it's cool. Use my picture in your ad. Use, you know, location specific images, you know, a picture of, you know, Champions Gate, you know, golf course and the fence, a picture of the Orlando Eye, a picture of, you um, you know, uh, the, the Sunset Strip, if you're out in California, so that people know that it's local. If, you know, where it was a restaurant in Paris, Eiffel Tower in the background, so that people immediately realize, oh, this is about me. Um, you know, filters are good. Just don't go overboard there. And then what you're seeing here is a carousel ad. See how they went ahead and they put four images together? This is the left side, this is the, the, the left middle, this is the right middle, and this is the right. So this kind of catches people's eyes as well. Um, you could do that with any kind of panoramic picture you have, whether it's a property or a product. So you want to use killer uh, images in your ads. Um, you also want to make sure you have great headlines. You know, what's the pain point? Here, Orlando, uh, Florida prices are higher than ever right now. Find out the true value of your home instantly for free. Just go here. That's a great picture with some great text. Here's another one. Visit to get a, latest, a list of the latest listings, some of which may not be on Realtor.com, Trulia, or the other sites. Or you could just say not on some of the apps. And then you have a killer picture. As I mentioned, the guy that was having issues, he was trying to post the spreadsheet here. You want a picture here, he'll get the spreadsheet at the next place or when he gives them their email address. Okay. Make sure you don't talk above people either. Use language that they'll understand. It's okay to make them laugh. Um, I'm not going to talk about split testing, but it's really important, you know, Let's say I ran these two ads, both looking for home values, and this one went ahead and got 100 clicks, and this one only got 40 clicks. I'm going to know that I should use more pictures like this than this. That's split testing in the simplest form. In the ebook uh, that we put together for you, there's a, a very detailed article, um, a chapter about the uh, split testing. Um, there's also a chapter in there about dynamic ads, and we're not going to spend any time on today's webinar talking about it, uh, but it's, it's because it's really for big retailers. You know, people have a lot of inventory, but it's like putting the retargeting thing on um, autopilot. You know, it's implementing some of the strategies like Amazon uses where you go ahead and you look at, you know, a, a magic bullet smoothie maker, and then the next thing you know, you're not only being show, shown the smoothie maker, but you're also being shown related products like turmeric and protein powder. 
Um, there's a, a great chapter in the book on how to lower your overall Facebook ad budget. We're not going to go into detail because I think your brains are already exploding uh, based on what I've showed you. And I want to open this up to Q&A, but make sure you look at that. And then just remember, I think the last chapter in the book talks about, um, you know, how to create a lead capture fu uh, funnel. You know, it, when we go, if we look at the funnel on the top end, the top of the funnel, T-O-F-U, as it's said in this infographic, you know, we're just trying to attract visitors, you know, run, you know running a general attraction ad. I did another webinar in the members area about my three-step process. A, you know, go ahead and attract attention. Don't talk about your product or service. Become the mayor of your town and talk about your favorite wine bar. Talk about your five things to do in Orlando other than go to the amusement parks, you know, and then just advertise it to the people that you want to do business with, you know, whether those are people that, you know, have a million dollar net worth and are visiting from Brazil or from, you know, Europe or, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, college educated uh people downtown that you know are renting but who are you who are you trying to attract then you want to go ahead and get them to walk inter, interchange engage with your content and now we have you know we've converted the visitors to leads that's where we use the retargeting going back at them with that engagement post it might be something along the lines of Here's an article on five things you need to do if you're thinking about buying a property in Florida. Or the three most common questions that I get asked about the homestead exemption, right? Then you go ahead and get down to where it's, uh, it, it, it talks about leads to customers. You know, you create an opt-in form where they have to give you their email address or, you know, for more information or to download the report. Then you follow up with them, they become customers, and you know you stay top of mind with them. They're going to promote you in the future. Um, in the in you know for the realtors, you know you run the ad about what your house is worth. You send them to something that converts. It's called a landing page. You you build this with something like lead pages. That's a tool you could use, or you could contract with you know a company like ours to do it for you. They end up at an automated process where they give us their contact information, and now you got a lead generating machine. Your job, get this out there to as many pe targeted people and keep running it to you, you get it. You advertise to 1,000 people, you get 20 people to visit this page, 10 fill it out, 10 leave. Because of retargeting, we can market to all 20 of those with the retargeted ad, and then we can email the people that uh, actually fill out the form. I know it sounds easy, and, and it is, but it's also hard. It's hard to get started. But hopefully you have enough uh, information here to understand the process. And uh, I uh, found my, my business page is Business Success Training. You could also uh, reach us at uh, Steve Black Speaker. So you go to fb.com forward slash Steve Black Speaker. Uh, I've uh, put together with my team a number of uh, ebooks, webinars. I host the Success Summit seminar. I'm available for corporate training. I'm available for uh, private webinars. Of course, there's fees involved. You know, you just uh, you hire one of the best, and you're going to get really great information. And uh, it's always relevant. It's always up to date. I enjoy being with everybody today. And anybody has any questions, just uh, enter them in the chat box or comment below. Look forward to uh, your success stories and seeing you at the top.